going to talk about on-farm food safety, let's talk on the farm. Now, of course, this is a research facility. This is at the university. Didn't have enough time to go to a couple friends' farms, but you do what you can do for theatrics. Now, people don't necessarily think of this food. They think of their dinner plate. But on-farm food safety, this is where it starts. It starts with research and getting that research out into the field and having it make a difference. And that's a real challenge. But there's been a number of successes that have happened. Uh, you look at the uh, Nebraska corn-fed beef program. I think D. Griff has done a great job getting all those producers on there. And what it really is is a great QA program. The data is there, and they can prove what they're doing. That's the best you can do. People are always going to say, "Cow, you know, my favorite line from Regis Philbin a few years ago on the Gab Fest with Kathy Lee before she left. Anything from a cow is bad. Well, it's not. But there are risks, and they need to be managed appropriately. Okay, but there's a real danger, of course, in overselling these things. You know, why are all these outbreaks happening at HACCP-based facilities? HACCP is a great tool to reduce risk, but it's not going to solve all the problems. And we, as an industry, as academics, and as government, have to be very careful not to oversell it, because there's always going to be problems. You can't have real HACCP on the farm. You can have HACCP-like procedures, but remember, human behavior is very unreliable and very difficult to quantify. So don't oversell things. There's an old saying, and you've probably heard me say it before, bullshit is the grease on the skids of innovation. So be careful about that, because down the line, your credibility will be harmed, because remember, there's that consumer interest out there. They don't see this cow, what they say is that see maybe that broken needle in their steak at home. You know, stigma is an incredibly powerful emotion that consumers use to decide what's real and what's not. They don't want to know all the specifics about bovine spongiform encephalopathy and transmissibles and new variant Kreutzfeldt Jakob disease. They just say British beef, it's bad, yuck, I want to stay away from it. A good example of this, I talked about those California strawberries and raspberries. Poor strawberry growers, we went back in, you know, six months later they had an outbreak of hepatitis A and frozen strawberries that turned out have been illegally grown in Mexico and sold to the U.S. school lunch program. They had a hep A outbreak, vaccinated all kinds of kids. Well, of course, strawberry sales collapsed all through North America. I went into the grocery store with a couple of my younger kids who weren't in school at the time, during the week, and uh, we went and we shot, of course, California strawberries were really cheap. Couldn't give them away. I picked up a couple of pints and all these people in the produce section, they just stopped and stared at me like I was, you know, a child abuser. And one of them actually came up to me and she said, didn't you hear about the strawberries? Don't you know they're poison? Well, I looked at her and I said, uh, geez, you know, I'm a professor in food safety and blah, blah. It didn't matter. She was gone. I'd lost her. She had concluded that I was a bad person. All she had heard was that it was bad and therefore stay away from it. I walked away because there was no, she wasn't going to change her mind. I was a child abuser in their mind because of course my kids are eating the damn things in the cart because they're animals. Speaking of animals, Do they still do jokes about Aggies and sheep? 